Well, it's a new year, all right? It's 2020, and we just passed another decade. Um, so I wanted to talk about some of the stuff from this past decade that uh, I liked. So this is these are going to be top 10 lists for both uh, my, my top 10 movies of the decade and the top 10 records of the decade. So we'll do movies first and take a little commercial break and then come back for my top 10 records of the decade. Um, and I'm going to preface this by saying these aren't, uh, this is my personal top 10 of movies and, and the records of the decade. This isn't, uh, an argument of what films better or what records better. This is just, these are things that got me through the last decade. These are things that I watched or listened to a lot. And I mean, you might laugh at some of them, whatever. I don't really care. Cause you know what? I like what I like. Um, so let's get into it. Let's, let's start, let's start with the top 10 movies of the decade. So for me, <clears throat> starting at number 10, I have Kubo and the Two Strings. Um, I like animated stuff. Um, I, I like animation. I like seeing different types of animation. And, um, you know, at this point in my life, I like seeing if I can pull some of it off myself, doing some of the, my own animations. And I've dabbled in a little bit of it. Um, but this one is a stop motion animation which is something I am fascinated by. I, I love watching stop motions. I've made a, a couple of couple of stop motions, I guess. Um, it's, it's very time consuming and can be a little difficult. Um, anyways, Kubo and the Two Strings is a, just a really great story about a kid kind of trying to find himself. And uh, it's about family and, you know, kind of standard family film themes, um, but it's told really well. Um, again, this for me, it's mostly the stop motion that really just captures my attention. Um, so yeah, I have that as my top ten. Um, my number nine is kind of a kind of a funny movie. It's a uh, Nice Guys with um, uh, Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe. Uh, uh, both both playing different ends of law enforcement. One's a kind of a buffoon detective and the other one's uh, kind of an enforcer type who should be a detective. <laughs> um, and they, they team up to, uh, to solve, solve some, some case, but it's, it's, I don't know. I, I don't think I'd seen a movie. Uh, I like Ryan Gosling, um, but I don't think I'd seen a movie where he was really played this kind of a character maybe i've missed something in the past and again i haven't seen every movie that exists so take that into account when you're hearing my list as well as i, d I haven't watched every movie so there's gonna be stuff that's left out and with that being said i haven't seen every ryan gosling movie and i think that this movie changed my opinion on him and it's really just kind of a fun uh, just kind of a romp detective movie. Um, it has a bit of a little bit of the like kind of big Lebowski vibe to it. So if you're looking for kind of a, I guess it would be like a subtle dark humor kind of comedy, but this has a little bit more slapsticky elements to it. Not a lot. Um, just enough that make it, make it really entertaining. So number nine, I have, uh, nice guys. At number eight, I have a pretty recent release, Jojo Rabbit, and I'm a, I'm a fan of director Taika Waititi. I think he uh, he pops up and stuff. I think he's a pretty funny actor, um, and I his his vision as an as a creative is something that I respond to a lot. Um, I've seen him talk about uh, there's a ted talks that i've listened to that's just it's one of my favorites it's kind of just uh, uh inspiring people to be more creative um by explaining his process a little bit but um it's kind of uh sad i guess that he's even had to say that it sucks that he's had to make a an, a movie about why it's bad being a nazi these days but i wouldn't say that's the over 
like the, the it, I wouldn't say they beat you in the face with that message. It takes place in a time period. Um, but for as serious as, uh, content as we're dealing with, he manages to make humor in like the darkest situations and some of the, some of the relationships between some of the characters are just really, really strong, unique and entertaining relationships. And I mean, I could pick any number of, of people that the boy Jojo deals with in the movie. Um, but to me, you know, one of, one of my favorites is his friend, um, What's his name? Porgy? I think his name's Porgy. Um, anyways, they're really funny. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a powerful movie. It, it, it it did some things I didn't expect at all. Um, but it was, it was, uh, executed well and meaningful and, uh, particularly timely. It's again, irritating that we have to have a movie about why being a Nazi is not good. But, um, anyways, number eight was Jojo rabbit. Um, number seven is a movie. I'm not, I'm not always a huge whodunit type, type of movie goer. Um, I think I, I saw clue when I was younger and it's fine. Um, sure it's it's a it's it's a fun movie i don't go out of my way for for that kind of whodunit type mystery um and i know there's a lot of good ones out there but again i've missed some probably a lot and <clears throat> based from what i've seen in my, my in my free time with my ability to see the movies that i've seen um i'm going to put knives out at number 7 because this, I feel like Ryan Johnson does a really good job of taking classic ideas or tropes and modernizing them, really. And that's that's really what Knives Out is. Is it feels like kind of an ensemble, old school whodunit, but with uh, new twists. And I found it super entertaining. And when I think of that genre of movie, this is the one that I'm going to go to. This is the one that I'm going to rewatch again and again and again. Um, and the cast in it's fantastic. Daniel Craig uh, is just great. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's got this like Southern accent. He's this, he's this um, detective that's trying to figure out who killed, who killed this guy. Uh, who's a, I guess he's a thriller writer um, uh, author and he, he dies and they're trying to figure out who, who killed him, um, between all of his family members. And there's just a lot of people in it. Tony Collette's in it. Uh, Chris Evans, um, Christopher Plummer. It's great cast and I highly recommend it. And again, this is the go-to, uh, whodunit movie for me. Um, as far as I'm concerned from now on, um, Oh boy, we're going to get into some, some, <laughs> we're getting into superhero genre mostly now. Uh, I apologize, but at the same time I don't because, uh, number six I have as, uh, I have Logan as number six. Um, the X-Men franchise under Fox has been okay. There's been some really good movies and some really not good movies. Um, and, and the good movies are really good. I, I, I really enjoy days of future past, but I think Logan really took not just the superhero uh, genre. Uh, they, they, they took this Wolverine character into it. It's a Western. This is a, this is a Western movie. This is, uh, uh, this is the uh, you know the the cantankerous old outlaw that has to do one last ride type type deal, and um, I th- we've been seeing it for a while. Particularly, Marvel's done a really good job of taking different genres and bringing making like a heist movie, but it's got Ant Man in it as opposed to like trying to make a Ant Man movie and 
it, and they do a heist in it. You know, they made a heist movie with Ant Man, um, and I think I think the fact that they have done such a good job that Fox was able to take. Uh, I'm stumbling over my words here. Not Marvel didn't create this, but they've done it very well. And so when Fox took this of you, let's take this one character and let's make let's make it uh let's make it a western let's make this a western with wolverine in it um it's it's oh man it's probably got some of the best hugh jackman and um uh why am i forgetting his name wow everyone's gonna gonna hate me uh uh wow uh, Jean-Luc Picard himself, Professor X, um, both of them, some of the top Patrick Stewart. Wow. Uh, some of the best acting from both of them. I, I mean, they, they both are, are fantastic actors and have done a bit of really great work. Uh, there should have been some, uh, awards talk, for for their acting performances in that movie but that's that's one that holds up for me and that's one that i'm definitely gonna gonna rewatch as the uh the new the new decade passes so uh number six we had logan number five um i really tried to separate the marvel cinematic universe i didn't want to i almost put the whole thing there as one movie which kind of would have been a, 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 a cheat, but there, there's a lot of great movies in there. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you one of my honor, honorable mentions is uh, Captain America Winter Soldier. That movie, I think, changes the narrative of the MCU. Um, and it's also kind of a, an insane movie, in my opinion, for Disney to put out. It was kind of a not complete anti-government, but kind of just be aware movie. And... and I don't know. I might have been reading something that other people didn't see in that, but uh, I thought it was a bold choice, but it didn't make this list. Uh, that being said, number five is the first Avengers movie. And the reason I have the first Avengers movie on here, there's there's two, I'll, I'll be honest, there's, there's t- yeah, there's two MCU movies in here. Um, the first Avengers for me, is kind of the reason I am doing what I'm doing. I, I've always loved movies. I grew up, uh, loving going to the movie theater. Um, we have a holiday tradition of going to the movies on Christmas. Um, I always made my dad take me to movies when I'd see him on the weekends, things like that. Um, but you know, after a while I kind of, I started doing other things. Life kind of got in the way and, I didn't care about movies as much. I went and saw them, but I just didn't care as much. I was like, nah, cool. I saw this movie. Um, and then in 2012, I was living in the Bay Area and working at um, a used bookstore um, right next to a comic book shop. And, um, you know, I kind of started dipping my finger back into the comic book genre a little bit, just kind of seeing what was out there, talking to... Um, other comic book, uh, fans I had around me and I just kind of started to get a little bit more excited. And then Avengers came out that year and I think I walked to the theater to go see that movie like six or seven times. I can't remember the exact number, but it was, it was over five for sure. Uh, and that kind of reignited my, my love for movies it's this is gonna sound really funny but as a kid you know i i really liked the uh val kilmer batman forever and it's not a great movie uh but as a kid i really enjoyed it and i remember walking out of the theater being like well this is really really cool i really like this one and that's how it's this is the kind of feelings i had coming out of the first avengers movie where it was like not only did they do an individual character well but they did a team well they built up something and i mean i don't want to regurgitate the same things that everybody said about that first avengers but they did it that you know they did something that 
I thought was impossible. And I mean, from there, Marvel just continued to build and grow. So number five, I have uh, the first Avengers movie. Um, number four is another animated movie. Um, this, this, this whole thing with Spider-Man has been a uh, kind of a whirl, whirlwind. I never thought um, I'd see Spider-Man in the MCU, and then you know all these these um, battles back and forth between rights of you know, we're going to take it back, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Well, I regardless of whatever happens with the live action Spider-Man, which I, I do like Tom Holland. I think he's a good Spider-Man. He might be my favorite. No, he is my favorite. Hands down. He's my favorite, uh, live action Spider-Man. But my number four is Spider-Man into the spider verse. And this movie is just fantastic from, from the story that they tell, um, which brings in multiple different spider people, um, or no, sorry, different spider, heroes there we go different spider heroes um you get m a multiverse of of uh possibilities of spider-man you get there's a noir spider-man that's played uh voiced by nicholas cage and a lot of people like spider ham who's voiced by uh, uh john mulvaney um this movie not only is entertaining, but like I said, I really like watching animations and they invented techniques for this movie. The, um, the, the, the panel, the, it, this movie is a live action comic. You are looking at panels. You are looking at textured backgrounds. You're looking at, you're looking at like little details. You didn't know you were looking at that aren't traditional animation this movie i think to me is one of the best animated movies ever made and i it definitely deserves to be in a lot of people's top 10 even if it's animated movies however you guys want to do your list but spider-man into the spider-verse is a fantastic movie and if you haven't seen it i think everybody should go watch it right away number three i have uh Mad Max Fury Road. Now it's it has been a minute since I've watched this movie. It's been eh, maybe about six months or so, or a little longer. I don't know, but this movie is one that since it came out, I always go back to. Uh, like I said, it's been a, it's been a little bit, but I I love watching this movie. I uh, I remember watching the original Mad Max with my dad when I was younger, um, and I thought they were cool because you know world building and they set up a post-apocalyptic environment that I kind of thought was, you know, uh, a cool aesthetic. Um, but I don't like going back and watching those movies, particularly is it the first one they like kill his dog in the beginning, like right in the beginning of the movie. Uh, and it's, it's no John wick. Let's be honest. Those uh those those other ones, those original Mad Max, they're they're fine movies, but you're gonna kill a dog, you gotta have a better arc. <laughs> but anyways, Mad Max Fear Road is just a it's a gasoline tank of of action. Uh this this movie George Miller directed this movie out in the desert and it was like I think a lot of studio execs were like this crazy old guy is just going into the desert to make a movie and came out with one of the best action movies uh, easily of the decade. Um, the the car stunts in it are, are phenomenal. The color grading is is perfect. It has its it has a perfect coloring. Like I, it, it's hard to describe that for a movie, but. Whoever color graded that movie did a perfect job, in my opinion. Um, it, there, there's film study classes on this. It's particularly about uh, visual effects. There, there is a why visual effects are uh, important YouTube video out there. It's been out for a year or two, and they go over Mad Max Fury Road quite a bit, um, uh, and how how CG can be used subtly. Um, but they did do their own, they did do a lot of stunts and, and shot all these action scenes and blew stuff up out in the desert. And it's just really awesome. 
And, oh, man, Charlize Theron. So you have a Mad Max movie where, you know, the character doesn't talk very much. It's not that he can't. Um, this isn't a Judge Dredd situation where he's just wearing a mask the whole time. He can talk. He just doesn't very much. It's just kind of his his uh, his persona. But when you put him, when you put this character with the character they created for Charlize Theron... Wow, what a powerhouse. I, after that movie came out, I think everybody was clamoring for a Furiosa movie. That was her name, right? I think that's what they called her. Furiosa. Um, and I I still want to see it. I, I know there was production issues and there was uh, issues with Tom Hardy and Char- uh, Char- Charlize Theron on set. I think they're, they've kind of mended things from... I don't know. I'm not their friend. I don't know these things. I just hear stuff. Um, but it, I would like, I would like to see, e- even if it's just her, I would like to see an, another expa- a sequel to the wor- to this last Mad Max ro- uh, world that was built for us. I, I, I want to see more in that. So that was number three. Number two is, uh, oh, this is, this is great. Um, when it comes to monster movies, uh, I always heard about, you know, growing up, there's people who love just the specific mummy, vampire, Frankenstein kind of, kind of, um, monsters growing up. Um, I liked those kinds of monsters, but I never was attached to them. So whenever I hear there's a werewolf movie coming out, whatever, cool. If it's a good movie, I'll see it. Um, if there's a vampire movie coming out, which, oh, oh boy, there's been quite a bit of vampire movies for the, I mean, I feel like the whole last decade and then some was just, uh, terrible approaches at vampire content. But this movie, which started as a a short film and has now moved into the TV world. And as as we speak, I think they're finishing up season two of What We Do in Shadows. Um, this movie is... Uh, it's it's another Taika Waititi movie. I guess I didn't realize that when I was putting this on here. But this is my favorite Taika Waititi movie. Um, it's not as heartfelt as Jojo Rabbit. Um, but it, it really takes the concept of... Uh, a, t- a two minute joke really of uh, four vampires living in a house together and turning it into a short film and then a full length film and now a multi season television show. Um, what we do in the shadows is the best vampire uh, content we have <laughs> to date. Um, I almost want to call it my favorite Halloween movie, but it, I, I'll watch it any time of the year. Um, that The premise of it is there's four vampires. The movie, at least, the uh, premise is there's four vampires that live in a house together. Um, they're roommates. They deal with roommate scenarios. Um, they all live in New Zealand. And, uh, yeah, they do, they deal <laughs> with the um, day-to-day or night-to-night monotony of... <laughs> being uh roommates to other other vampires and what it's like in kind of in the supernatural world there's other creatures uh werewolves and such that also exist in it it's really fun it's it's really (laughs) it's the (laughs) best vampire movie best mockumentary one of my favorite comedies of the decade um what we do in shadows if you have not seen it go watch it go watch the short on youtube and then watch the the show uh all of it all of it is great all of it is great the show does have a different set of vampires in new york um different group same premise similar jokes executed differently and just as well um highly recommend all of it so number two i have what we do in shadows and number one are you ready you guys ready this is kind of where I uh, kind of, I, I didn't cheat. I did legitimately put this on here. But my number one of the decade, and this is, oh, there's so many reasons why this is number one for me. This is Avengers Endgame. 
Now, we don't have Avengers Endgame without the first Avengers, which is number five on my list. But we also, this decade, as we as as 2019 has passed, we have seen the end of handfuls of uh, really popular uh, series and, and story arcs. So we have Game of Thrones, highly popular TV show, kind of went out on a whimper. Uh, a lot of people were disappointed with that last season. Um, and now we have Star Wars, this whole Skywalker uh, saga ending. And uh, a lot of people at this point will say that they did not nail the, their their ending. Uh, we'll get into that in another, another episode, but, um, then we have the MCU and the MCU continues, but they set up story arcs. They've set up, um, phases and this phase of, uh, of the MCU that they, they closed out is one of the most important movie franchises to date if you're not paying attention to what marvel's done th- then here's a little lesson nobody's done what they've done nobody has created multi multi billion dollar franchise franchises and merged it all together into one cohesive story sure there's little little story points here and there spider-man at one point throws off the timeline by having a graphic that says I think it's six years instead of four years or something like that. So yeah, there's little, little tiny details to the story, but they, they mapped this out. This is incredible. What Kevin Feige and the team over at Marvel has done. They, they changed cinema in the same kind of ways that, well, not in the same technical ways, but on a, on a, on a grander scale that, that Star Wars did back in the 70s, you know, Star Wars uh, became so popular that not only merchandising and and the summer blockbuster became, you know, more of a, a, of a, of a thing for other studios to accomplish, but the people behind Star Wars are also the same people behind a lot of the Adobe products and advancements in film technology and photography technology. Like these people are behind some of that. So you have, you have this movie franchise that kind of progressed cinema, but Marvel did it in a different way. Marvel did it more in a, and don't get me wrong. They have some technical achievements for sure. Their, their de-aging or aging technology that they have is better than most. Um, young, uh, uh, young versions of actors in, in MCU movies are usually pretty well done. Um, you can still see some, some seams and edges and things like that, but for the most part, they do a really good job of, uh, of, of de-aging or aging people up. So on the technical side, they've done a, a phenomenal job. Um, but storytelling, nobody else has done this. Nobody else has told this a vast of a story and, not had to cancel it because the first movie flopped or you pick a reason in Hollywood why movies don't get made. Um, Marvel pulled it off and Avengers Endgame. There's a lot of, uh, sure. There's, I guess what you could call fan service. Rise of Skywalker has a lot of fan service as well. That maybe does not work as well to the overarching story, overarching story to star Wars. Um, but Endgame Endgame just nails this. They give you they give you scenes and and uh, things that you've wanted to see. If you're a comic book fan, you've wanted to see these two characters on the big screen your whole life. You probably saw it in Endgame, um, and they didn't do it just because they they uh, they had time to fill. The movie's long. I, f- I forget the runtime. I think it's close to three hours. No, I think it's like two and a half hours, something like that. But anyways, it's a long movie, but. But they give you things, and it's needed. It's necessary. Like, uh, oh my god, how long is that end battle scene? It might be twenty minutes long. Um, I in the theater when I saw it. I I I tend to go to movies 
uh, like this by myself for my first viewing so I can have my own emotional reactions by myself. Um, I, there, there was a handful of vocal moments for me in the theater. Um, I mean, cap and the cap, captain America and the hammer, um, Oh man, I, I, I'm just kind of blanking out because there's so many cool things to talk about in that movie. If you're such a fan of those franchises and wanted to see all of the things that they did, um, they nailed it. That's how you, that's, that's how you end something. That's how you, even if they didn't make any more Marvel movies after that, I would still be completely satisfied. Um, yeah, uh, end game to me is by my most rewatchable out of all of these, I would say it's, I don't necessarily, I mean, I've seen all the Marvel movies, so I don't need context of going back to have to see all of this to get to this point. No, I I'll put on, and I did this with infinity war too. I would put on just clips from the movie and just watch the clips on over and over and over again. Like, uh, uh, when infinity war came out, it was always the uh, like Thor, ends up on Wakanda, just put that on on repeat. Um, by the way, Thor's character in Endgame is probably the most relatable character for me The in all of Marvel. Uh, that is that is me. <laughs> Thor's character in Endgame, I feel like, is me. Um, minus the superhero parts. <laughs> Anyways, that is my top 10 movies of the decade again these are my favorite movies they don't have to be yours and they weren't meant to start arguments of what films better these are literally just like hey john really like these movies and he'll probably keep watching them a lot over the years so uh, again number 10 kubo and the two strings Number nine, The Nice Guys. Number eight, Jojo Rabbit. Number seven, Knives Out. Number six, Logan. Number five, uh, the first Avengers movie. Uh, number four, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Number three, Mad Max Fury Road. Number two, What We Do in Shadows. And number one, Avengers Endgame. Uh, let's see what 2020 has in store for us. And in 10 years, when I'm still making podcasts... We can talk about all the movies that uh, were great of the uh, of this decade. So I'm excited to see what all these studios have in store for us next.